Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial on how to use EB Synth and Disco Diffusion to make videos in conjunction with each other. So before I start here, there is a couple things that you will need. You will need Disco Diffusion, you will need EB Synth, and you will also need a video editor program that can take a movie and export in it into frames or you can do that online at some sites. So I have already done that. This is my original video here, Robbo. And it's just about an eight second video, but I made 200 frames out of it. So what I did was I loaded this video up into my movie editor. Okay, and so now I'm here in my video editor and I will take the movie that I chose and put it in here. And then I'm just gonna choose the option here to export the movie into frames. Okay, and I'm back in my folder now. Now, I also recommend making a new folder anytime you do this because you got to mess with folders a lot here. So I've already used my batch converter, and what I did was I converted all of my frames into PNG files. So here now are all the frames of my movie ready to go in PNG files. And so now the next step is to make a keyframe directory. And what a keyframe is, is that's the frame that's going to dictate how all the other frames look. And so what I'm doing for this, I'm just going to make a keyframe every 25, but um, where you normally want to do it is like if something new comes in the scene or like just talking, sometimes you have to do a lot of frames there for your mouth. So it's good to pick a video where there's not a lot of new elements and basically your point of view doesn't change and you kind of see things you can do with anything. It just depends on how much work you want to do. Okay, now something else you don't want to do, these are all my frames for my movie, is you don't want to cut these files you want to copy them when you make your keyframes so like i said i'm going to just do every 25 so i'm just going to right click this file number 100 and i'm going to copy and paste it into my keyframes and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take all of these and i'm going to edit them using disco diffusion and i did a tutorial on using starting image so that's what we're going to do with this one okay and i have my image here number 100 and i'm now going to i pasted it in there and I am now going to start the run to modify that image. And my prompt here for this one is a Geiger biomechanical robot of Philip K. Dick. I thought that'd be appropriate given the subject matter of the video. Okay, and while this is winding down here, so you want to do this with each of your keyframes, kind of change it. And so the video will change each time you do make a new keyframe. And it won't be exactly the same, of course, because we're using Disco Diffusion. So you want to make a good one. So I might, I might redo this one. This one's all right, but maybe I can get a better one. So I'm going to do that now to the rest of my keyframes, which I believe is seven or eight keyframes. And then after I do that, I'm going to download all my keyframes here that I've modified. And then we'll go back to the folder and I'll show what I do next. Okay, I'm back in my folder here now. And what I have here in my folder is all of the source files from the original video. And then I have my keyframes that I just rendered. So you do have to really kind of keep track of your folders and everything. I'm just going to go ahead and move these now over to the keyframes. So now the next thing I'm going to do is go and edit each one of these in a image editor and clean them up a bit, things like that. Okay, and actually you do need an image editor because the other thing too is a lot of times your videos will not be in powers of 64 and Disco Diffusion will turn your image into a power of 64. So you also need to open those image files to resize them. Okay, and now we've resized it. And now what I'm gonna to do to clean this up a bit is to open the keyframe that this is based on, the same image basically. And you want to make it look as much like that image as possible, but still maintain, you know, the cool stuff that Disco Diffusion did to it. So I'm going to put this on top. And now I just kind of want to look at them and see how different they are. And that's not too bad. But another cool thing you can do here is if you have these kind of weird parts like that looks kind of stupid. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of erase that and keep the original. So you can kind of do this and this will make your video come out a lot better and a lot more coherent because um, EB Synth will kind of use this as a guide. It'll use this keyframe as a guide for every other frame in the video. So you really want to give it a good guide here. And if you want, you can just clean, you know, you can just erase pretty much everything except for the important stuff. 
you know, stuff in the center of your video, and it'll make your video turn out a little bit nicer. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to resize and edit all of my keyframes. I believe I have nine. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll come back. Okay, and we are in the final stages now. I've cleaned up those images that we altered in Disco Diffusion, and it's time to run EB Synth. Now you need to have this program in the same folder as your keyframes and your source file. So you have, so I copy this sometimes, move it around a lot. So make sure this is in the same one or it won't work. So we're going to go ahead and run it. And for the keyframes part here, and this is what I mean about the numbers. Like I was talking about before, you have to have the numbers match. They have to have the same digits. So I always start with 100 anyway. So this is our keyframes directory. So we're just going to drag it over there. And this is our source file. These are the original ones. This is going to tell the movie how to run. And we're going to put that there. Now, if you'll notice, too, it's running from keyframe 125 both ways. So what I'm going to do is just delete all of these here. Otherwise, you'll get a lot of duplicate files, and it'll get real messy. So we want to kill all of these. And then we're only going to go to... 124 so we're going to cut one number on each of these two so we just so to avoid duplicates and this one will run all the way because that's the end and now we're going to go ahead and run our program now this is a weight i believe this tells the video how much would look like the keyframe that kind of thing i'm going to lower this one a little to two and we're going to go ahead and run it Okay, so what it's doing now is it's now creating the output files and it's making every single one of those 200 frames look like whichever keyframe we have. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we just had to do eight renders in Disco Diffusion to get 200 frames. So this will save you just massive amounts of time doing it this way. And you also get a result that's real coherent. You know, the result's going to look basically like whatever video you have in there. And you can get as crazy as this as you want. You could make all kinds of keyframes. Um, like I said, this is for animators. I have There's a lot of YouTube videos about EB Synth itself where people have done some cool stuff. So this is a real cool program, too. I don't think very many people have done this. What we're doing here, what I'm doing, combining EB Synth with the Disco Diffusion quite like this. I've seen some kind of similar samples, but nothing quite like this. So go ahead and get out there and let's make some stuff. And if you do, show me what show me what you've done. I'd love to see it. Go ahead and throw a link down there in the comments. Okay, and it has finished. It can take a little while, like five minutes, so you know, not too terribly wrong. Okay, and we are finished now. So EB Synth does run really fast. It usually won't take more than like five or ten minutes, even with a lot of frames. So now what we do is we take all of these files now that we have just created that EB Synth has altered to look like our keyframe file, and we go and we load them up in a movie editor and turn it back into a movie.